as a sort of journalist and, and producer um, by trade, one of the most exciting aspects of the work we've done in VR, uh, aside from getting to go to some cool places and, and shoot some cool stuff, has been the chance to work with a guy like Ray, uh, who, as you can see, is, is a really sort of rare, rare breed uh, at a news organization. Um, I think a big part of the, uh, of the reason for the success we've had uh, at USA Today Network has been um, you know, Ray being able to work with us to, to help us tell these stories in VR, fuse all of these elements together. Uh, something like 360 degree, degree video or 360 degree photos are an element uh, of VR, but as, as you can see from Ray's presentation, it's just sort of one building block into envisioning a story, uh, 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 the, the best way to tell a story for this, for this new medium. Uh, and as Mitch touched on earlier, you know, we firmly have believed from the start that, that VR is a, a new medium, a new way to consume content, a new way to reach audiences uh, with storytelling. Uh, it's not replacing anything that came before it, but we see it as, uh, as something that we want to have as a story option, a tool in the toolbox for all of our newsrooms uh, throughout the network to sort of look at their spectrum of, of coverage for the week and say, you know, that, that'd be a great video. That'd be a great feature, print feature on Sunday, but that's a great VR opportunity. Um, and, and have the, the tools and the workflows in place to be able to, to pull that off. Um, at this point, I usually say some line to the effect of, we've talked a lot about the opportunity and um, the promise of VR, and keep that in mind, because producing great VR is an enormous pain. Uh, especially right now, it's it's uh, it's tricky. There's a lot of ins and outs to it. It's a lot of quirks. Uh, the gear um, is finicky. It, it's a little difficult to work with in the field. Uh, it's a completely sort of uh, it, it's its own beast in terms of production techniques and sort of figuring out n n what works narrative wise to, to tell a story uh, in VR. Um, but I wanted to sort of lead through some, uh, through some camera solutions, which were touched on earlier. And we've got uh, examples here of a few. As Mitch mentioned, sort of the, um, the, uh, the top tier of various forms of GoPro uh, arrays. And this whole space is moving very, very fast. Uh, new cameras are being released pretty much every month at this point. Um, but as you can see from a system like this, this is a pretty much um, an analog system. It's like the difference between an analog watch and a digital watch in some ways. This is a, a, a reinforced mount that have a, has a bunch of GoPros crammed into it. Um, to achieve a spherical video, you know, you're shooting on, on GoPros. You're dumping all of that raw uh, footage into software to stitch it all together into a spherical video. Um, so it's a very time-consuming post-production process. The reason that you go through all of that pain is because it gives you a, a very nice high-resolution spherical video. Um, generally, the more cameras you have crammed into something, shooting something, you know, the higher resolution you're going to be able to get to at the end of the day. And uh, as you've seen uh, from, if you had a chance to demo some content out there, with where headsets have evolved to, the resolution on our phones and on these VR headsets is so spectacular that you can really tell really quickly uh, something in, in lower resolution or at a lower frame rate is, is just sort of immediately a, a, a apparent as not a, a, as as quality of an experience. Um, not saying there's not a place for it, but basically for really uh, you know intense or um, emotive feature storytelling. Uh, a, a rig like this is, is what what most what, what what most people are working with. There's many tiers above above this, as you see there. The Yo the Ozo in Hollywood, you know, at at, at the uh, at the studios, there are many examples of custom rigs and, and cameras like the Ozo that run from 60k on up to 100 or 200k uh, that are um, just producing some incredible cinematic VR. Uh, Lucasfilm is dedicating like, buildings to, to VR production and, and processing. Um, so there's tons of incredible stuff going on. What we sort of 
focus on that you say today network is is finding the sweet spot for the kind of storytelling that 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 we want to be doing journalism wise that's going to add value uh, so this is pretty much with, with some rare exceptions this is kind of the, the top of the stack for us in terms of the rigs that we're, we're working with um, the next step down from these rigs also a GoPro rig but as you can see much smaller um, much more lightweight this is two GoPros modified with big fisheye lenses that give you basically a 180 degree view in one direction and in the other direction. Um, so compared to a six camera rig where you're stitching together with a, all this intersecting in your software, with a rig like this just you're slapping together front and back one stitch point, still using GoPros you're able to get nice high resolution out of that um, but uh, uh, and you're still stitching but it's a little simpler and so a little bit uh, quicker turn. This is the kind of rig that we're using for sort of weekly, you know, tied to the news features. The Blue Angels clip that hopefully everyone had a chance to check out uh, was shot with this camera, um, which surprises some people when, when we tell them that. But um, it's a good example from the standpoint of wanting to turn that around relatively quickly, but also, um, you know, high. Blue Angel pilot, can I stick this in your cockpit? <laughs> you know? um, probably not going to happen. Um, so you know that's that, that's another reason for that. Third, as as Mitch held up the Rico Theta, this is incredible. Um, this is basically the iPhone of 360. As you can tell, um, pretty similar uh, concept to the GoPro rig a fisheye lens on the front and back, right? Um, only Rico has figured out how to cram all of this into one little system and spit out one spherical file onto your desktop that you pretty much just have to process through their little desktop app and, it, and, it, and it, there's no stitching required. Um, resolution wise, you know, great, good, not so great on the video side. The theta is, you know, you have it, have it in your pocket, quick hit, breaking news kind of application um, on the video side. In terms of uh, panoramic photos, what we're really trying to sp uh, spread the knowledge about at our network and beyond is that this thing takes gorgeous panoramic stills. Rico sort of built it for stills. The first generation of this camera actually didn't even shoot video. Um, so the, the stills from this thing are spectacular. And we are trying to, as I said, sort of spread that gospel where, you know, make, make your choice in terms of what's best for storytelling. For example, we did a, a little feature uh, with the cherry blossoms, it's just a, a nice light little, little feature. Um, had our producer not even try to shoot video, just had him focus on shooting stills with the Theta. Um, you know, it's a static shot. There, there's not a lot that video is going to add you're looking around looking at flowers, you know. Um, not, a, not too much video adds there, so we're taking photos, adding some natural sound underneath that, adding some narration, putting together a nice feature that way, uh, trying to just kind of stay nimble and flexible with, with our flavors of VR storytelling. So as we've touched on, uh, I I'll, I'll, won't spend too much time on this because we've sort of touched on it already, but just the, the point here is uh, there are various VR platforms, and again, we're trying to apply the right storytelling to each one of these. So if we just have the opportunity to get a nice video feature, um, you know, we're not producing that for the HTC Vive. We're producing that for, for YouTube so people can watch it on uh, cardboard. We're producing it for, for the gear. Uh, and we're sort of calling it a day. Um, if we have the chance uh, for something like Harvest of Change or a couple other ones that we're working on that I wish I could talk about but I can't yet, um, they're going to be amazing. Trust me. Um, those are the ones that we, we call, we go to Ray and say, you know, in, in the five spare minutes that you have today, can we talk about how we can sort of put all of this together, all these elements together into a multi-platform uh, interactive experience. You know, basically passive, passive, sit down and look around. It's cool. Uh, as you all saw out there, interactive, walk around, you have controllers. Um, and, and the, the Oculus Rift as well. Uh, completely uh, n new ways to consume content in a, in a number of ways, not just you know, looking around at, at VR. Uh, as I mentioned, 
uh, each one of these, you know, more payoff means more work. Uh, we'll just kind of uh, go through this quickly, um, and we can we can follow up and talk more about this. I want to make sure we leave time for Q and A. So forgive me if I go kind of fast through this. Um, but as I mentioned, you know, the kind of the first tier uh, breaking news. Um, we're using a variety of things. Um, Photoshop, the Rico, Rico Theta. The benefit of that, as we mentioned, no stitching means you can just, uh, at the end of the day, dump your files onto your laptop and edit in Final Cut or something similar. And then, you know, we're producing that for YouTube, watch it on cardboard or maybe the Gear VR uh, for a nice, quicker turn tied to the news experience. Uh, that's, that's it in a nutshell. Um, you know, four hours at most, maybe a little longer, depending on the complexity. Next tier up from that, a feature piece. You know, this is where you get into, uh, right now, the need to stitch something together, much more time-consuming post-production, just from the standpoint of managing, you know, two to six memory cards from a GoPro rig, dumping that all into stitching software. Um, right now, the stitching software is still a little bit on the, on the heavy side. It takes some, some, some pretty significant processing power to kind of plow through all that data. Once you're happy with the, all of the files that you've stitched together, then you're moving into Final Cut to do your edit. Um, and then hopefully you have a nice high resolution piece that you're, that you're proud to show on a higher resolution headset like the Gear VR. So in, in today's video pieces, when I, when I put together a video story, I, I go from scene to scene, we cut and edit, and we can be in Malaysia in one moment, and we could be in you know, the United States the next. So in a virtual reality setting, when you're there and you're immersed in something, and you're talking about stitching and editing scenes together, you know, what, what are you doing? I mean, I, I'm just curious, like, what does that look like yes. so that it's an experience that's enjoyable and, 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 and telling a story with, without making someone throw up? Exactly. Great question. There's a, a, a lot to consider there. Uh, basically, we're keeping in mind that the whole point of VR is presence, right? We want, to, we want people to feel a natural presence in the world that we're putting them in. So things like camera placement, you know, when someone is watching a scene in, with a headset on, the camera that filmed that scene, is, think of it as their head. So natural camera placement, where someone would naturally be in a scene. And then we just have to keep in mind that uh, the viewer has control over what they're looking at. So fixed shots, um, the camera, in, in, when you're shooting a 360 scene, you're never doing any panning around. Um, the viewer is panning around, they're looking around. So we're looking for nice, stable, fixed shots. And then you mentioned in the editing process, it's completely opposite, the opposite of everything we learned. Um, you need to give the viewer time to look around. So you're keeping them in a scene for a good length of time before you move on to the next scene. The best practices around that are sort of starting, the dust is kind of starting to settle. Um, generally the industry kind of, I think, stayed on the conservative side with keeping just pieces moving real slow, you know, not cutting between scenes too quickly. Um, I think people are starting to play with that a little bit more. We, we have too. Um, I was telling the, the story that someone asked me to, to cut a sizzle reel, you know. Um, for VR, and I said, well, that's not going to work. Like, the viewer's looking around, you can't. Um, I was very skeptical about it, but we actually f we figured out a way to make it work, where we kind of stayed on each scene for seven to 10 seconds, kind of left viewers wanting more. Um, so it's, it's, getting, it's getting more interesting, but the general rule of thumb, giving someone presence, putting them in, in an environment, and letting them look around. A lot of the pieces that we've, that we've published have been one scene, you know, not, not a single edit. Other pieces, we're putting out packages where we're sort of transitioning viewers from scene to scene with a narrative leading through it. Um, and then the importance of, of audio. Uh, always, always the most important thing with video in, 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 in one manner of speaking, but audio to give that presence also is very important.